In terms of implementing things like network access control, security features, quality of service, and tunneling, uh, there is a very important object in Extreme Cloud IQ that basically ties all these features together. And that object is called a user profile. A user profile is a very powerful piece of configuration uh, that ties together a lot of the services that are implemented on the access point. Uh, the user profiles can be created either as part of the configuration workflow, so when you configure your network policy or SSIDs or port types on the wired side of things, you'll be able to create user profiles on the fly, or you can create them independently under the common object uh, view and pre-populate those uh, user profiles in the system. And also, they can be dynamically assigned in multiple different ways. So, user profiles, for example, can be mapped to different ports, uh, mapped to different user types, mapped to device operating system types, uh, mapped to radius attributes, um, and depending on radius authentication, you will get assigned different user profiles. And the most important thing here is a user profile will also determine which VLAN your client device goes into, or a group of VLANs uh, the client device falls into. And then, in that group of VLANs, the client device is going to be assigned in a round-robin fashion. So, it's a very powerful object and ties together a lot of the pieces of the configuration when it comes to client connectivity. So, we'll take you through how you can leverage user profiles to deploy uh, secure Wi-Fi networks with a lot of uh, add-on features that are provided by uh, cloud access points. The first set of features that have to do with user profiles um, are going to be firewall features. And we're talking about layer two or a MAC-based firewall or an IP firewall. Um, in terms of a MAC-based firewall, one thing we need to highlight immediately is a layer two or a MAC-based firewall is not a very effective security solution because MAC addresses can be spoofed unless you're using management frame protection. Um, for that reason, we would normally discourage customers from implementing MAC-based firewalls, but instead implement either network access control or IP-based firewalls where you, you would control traffic through either application types. So you would only allow certain applications or allow certain IP addresses or allow certain applications to communicate with certain IP addresses. Uh, you can have a combination of the two when using the IP firewalls. But still, you have the option of layer two or layer seven uh, firewalls in there. Uh, or you can use the basic layer three or IP-based access controllers. So it's up to you how you leverage these features. All user traffic can be inspected on the AP itself. Again, how you leverage that is up to you. Um, the deep packet inspection engine will provide information on the type of traffic that's used on a per flow basis for each device. And then you can decide on whether you want to permit the traffic, whether you want to drop the traffic, or maybe you want to uh, simply lock specific traffic to say, okay, so I just want to report it. Um, we've seen BitTorrent around, I'm not going to block it but I want to be notified about BitTorrent traffic um, and then follow up maybe later. So just like an, an ACL, uh, you can use the firewall function of the security uh, tab of the user profile in a very similar way as you would configure a firewall. And uh, the extent of the configuration, well, it's totally up to you. Uh, you, can, uh, the, you can deploy these rules in outbound or inbound direction, um, and you can do either permit, deny, or log. So those are the actions that we uh, offer for configuration. And this is all applied on the AP itself. So when you configure a user profile, when the configuration is pushed out to the devices, the rules are actually implemented on the access point itself, not on Extreme Cloud IQ. Extreme Cloud IQ simply creates this configuration and then pushes it down to the edge to all of the devices. The second use case for a user profile would be traffic tunneling. And depending on a user profile, or a type of user, you can decide to, tr to tunnel traffic to either a GRE endpoint or you can even tunnel it to a um, VPN endpoint. So you can 
either decide to use layer 2 IPsec VPN or you can use a GRE tunnel. The difference being one is encrypted, the other is not encrypted. Um, you would use encrypted traffic when you traverse a public network, whereas you would probably use GRE when you're, you're tunneling on a local network. Uh, the reason being you consume less resources on the AP if you don't use encryption, if you don't use IPsec. Regardless of which one you choose, uh, depending on a user profile, depending on a user type or a group of users, uh, you will invoke the traffic tunneling. And the way this works is, for example, if I want all of my guest traffic to be tunneled using a GRE tunnel to a DMZ, I would identify all those guests maybe, dep maybe depending on which SSID they connect to. Uh, if they connect to an SSID called guest, then I want to tunnel all the traffic to the DMZ. I apply a default user profile called guest, enable the traffic tunneling, and then point it to the VGVA or whatever the GRE termination point for the tunnel is in the DMZ, and the traffic will then be encapsulated and tunneled into uh, the GRE tunnel and to the GRE termination endpoint. The second use case, so apart from GRE tunneling and layer 2 IPsec VPN, is layer free roaming. So layer free roaming is actually disabled by default. If you want a specific user type or a user group to support layer free roaming, you have to uh, enable it in the traffic tunneling section of a user profile. All you do is simply you turn it on and that will then enable uh, layer free roaming. And layer free roaming is done automatically. As soon as a client is detected to have roamed across a layer free boundary, the access point, uh, the access point you're roaming to will form a tunnel with one of the access points you were previously attached to and the traffic will then flow to the original subnet the client came from. This will enable the client to keep its original IP address uh, and it will also enable all the TCP IP sessions to continue uh, and because load balancing is automatically used, uh, the access point will, or multiple access points when multiple clients cross that layer free boundary, they will automatically load balance between the access points in the previous layer 2 uh, management subnet. Uh, 